Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, let me say thank you, too, for your strong leadership on this committee as we are enjoying your last, last uh, committee hearing of, of, of your engagement in Congress. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you to all of you that are providing testimony today um, and also for your continued uh, dedication to keeping our nation just as safe as possible. Uh, we all know this issue is critically important to the people of this country, and it's certainly um, important to the people that I have the honor of representing in central Washington state. And unfortunately, as many of those sitting in the audience today uh, and those tuning in virtually at, at home know all too well, this fentanyl epidemic has taken just so many American lives. A lot of comparisons can be made. I many times say that more Americans die from fentanyl than we lost in the entire Vietnam War. That happens every single year. Uh, last year, a father in Yakima, Washington, Andy Wanakot, reached out to me to share a, a story of his tragedy. It's deeply sad, uh, saddening, uh, his personal experience with fentanyl is, over the span of about 18 months, he lost both of his sons in separate instances to substances laced with fentanyl. After hearing his story, I knew we had to do something. So I introduced the William and James Wanacott Act in honor of his two sons, which in this act focuses on enhancing enforcement and increasing penalties for fentanyl distribution. We, we soon, soon learned that there really is no silver bullet to solve this complex crisis, which is why we created the Central Washington Fentanyl Task Force. It's a working group comprised of more than two dozen experts on the front lines and those directly impacted by the crisis. We're finalizing a year-long report that outlines all relevant data and funding and policy and educational efforts on the subject. And this is where we really appreciate your collective expertise on the source of the problem, which is China. As our committee investigation unveiled today, the CCP is subsidizing, awarding, and in investing in, in chemical companies that are responsible. They're failing to prosecute these companies or collaborate with U.S. law enforcement, essentially conducting forms of legal and illegal statecraft to unleash an all-out drug warfare in a, what I think, not so covert effort to weaken their opponents and overthrow the democratic system. Uh, Mr. Barr, uh, like many others, uh, I'm interested in uh, how you think U.S. strategy, strategy should change uh, to enhance our enforcement capabilities and hold the CCP accountable. And you've answered extensively on that subject, and I appreciate that a lot. Do you also see, uh, as we witness the CCP use this subsidy playbook uh, in several other industries, the subsidies, awards, tax incentives, are there lessons that we can learn and apply to these state-sponsored fentanyl operations that you could expound on? Um, well, first, I have, no, I have no objection to engaging with the Chinese diplomatically. I think we should always stay engaged and, and, and uh, you know, present our case as forcefully as we can and get what we can through those discussions and offer uh, cooperation and so forth. But in the case of China, uh, and there's some other countries involved in drug trafficking that I think are the same, uh, I simply do not trust that we have, uh, that there are enough consequences to have them change their playbook. And I think we need to bring some consequences to the table, or at least the, pros the prospect of it. But I think the highest priority has to be going after the source. Waging the drug war here at home just means putting a lot of people in prison yep. and stacking them up. I think that it, we're dealing with a fundamental shift in, in drugs from organic to synthetic. To do what's being done on the synthetic front, you need an industrial base. You need two things, an industrial base and non-enforcement of law. Uh, it's going to be hard to shift this business anywhere else but China. India is a place that has the industrial base, but they have stronger enforcement and more cooperation with us. So this is the key vulnerability of all synthetic drug trafficking 
it's getting the Chinese to stop, and that's where I would put all my, not all, but most of my effort. Mr. Chairman, just real quickly, if I could um, ask Mr. Donovan, as an appropriator, we're looking at ways that we can enhance uh, the DEA's uh, capabilities. Are there anything specific divisions or programs within the DEA that we should keep top of mind? Yes, I do. I think that the uh, Special Ops Division, uh, that is the whole of government approach to going after this problem set. I think that is an area where if we can increase uh, funding there, then you'd see uh, somewhat of a change or an impact in, in international drug trafficking organizations. The more people we have, the more resources, the more we can do. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you for